guys, and welcome to Inside Steampunkery. My name is Michelle Cornwell Jordan, and I'm your host. This is a brand new web video chat, which I am very excited about. Um, I, through Inside Steampunkery, I will bring you authors and entertainers, makers, all those that's in the world of punk. And so I am very, very excited to have as one of my first guests, I have the lovely <laughs> uh, pirate writing, I call it pirate punk author, Christy Tyrone joining me. And she's gonna chat today uh, uh, concerning her uh, Endless Horizon pirate story. So I'm very excited. Christy, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you here. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> I, too. I really am, I really am. I'm very, very excited. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna jump right into it. How about for the viewers, you tell a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I'm an, I'm an artist, so I've always, you know, I've been painting, drawing, writing, doing things like that all my life. And it's been a dream of mine to write a novel. And so now I'm a stay home mother. I do a little bit of the bookkeeping at the auto shop that my husband and I own. So I'm pretty busy doing all that stuff. But um, I found time to start writing a book and fit it into my schedule. And now um, I have 11 published books. And yes! <laughs> And there's plenty more on the way. So now this is kind of, you know, my new thing, my new hobby, <laughs> my uh, new job. Yes. It's busy, but I love every bit of it. Very, very cool. Congratulations on the new uh, endeavor. And it seems to be just, you know, blowing up for you. So that is awesome. So let, I'm going to backtrack and I'm going to ask, how did you find, you, you just told how did you found the writing path, but was it something you thought you would do when you were younger or no? <laughs> Well, I've always um, written poetry and like short stories and stuff, but mm -hmm. to be honest, um, I was not the best student in school <laughs> and um, to want to write a book that, you know, with the, the proper grammar and good writing and all that, you know, stuff that you need to do to actually sell a book. I had to do a lot of work to get myself up to par for that. And so I guess, you know, considering that I, I've, I knew something I wanted to do, but it took a lot of work to get here, and I had to overcome a lot of struggles to get to this point. So, um, yes, I was determined to do it, so I kind of knew it would always happen, but um, there was a lot more to it than just, oh, I want to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just such a, oh, very, very, very cool. And, of course, you look lovely in your pirate garb. So how, tell us, how, pirates, how, why, where did you fall in love? How did you fall in love with I've always loved pirates since I was a kid. Um, <laughs> the Goonies, Treasure Island, you know, the adventure, the action, mm -hmm. all of those things that went along with those tales. And historic fictions were always my favorite kind of, you know, genre to read. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I decided to write, I was, I was like, oh, I'm going to try historic fiction. And the basis of the first story I started with was kind of based on um, – just a daydream, like, you know, the Caribbean, I've been there, and it's beautiful, and the beach, and the, the moonlight on the water, and all that stuff, but then, you know, wanting to be a historical fiction, I knew I had to do my research to make right. it historically accurate, and the more I, you know, delved into to that, the history came alive in a way that inspired my imagination, and took me places that I never imagined this story going. Very, very cool. Well, tell us, how many are there in your series? They're okay. standalones, correct? Or they're, they continue? Just tell us. I have, basically it's three different series that I have out right now, but they're all following different characters within the same family. Okay. So it's all the same story, just told from different perspectives. <laughs> it's like I'm uh, playing three different games of chess and like eventually I'm going to checkmate them all in one place. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> I like that. All right. Well, tell us about the story. Um, and where did the, well, the idea originate? Okay. Well, it started with uh, Charlotte Weatherby and Sterling Bentley are my characters yes. that I first got to know. Um, the idea, like I said, started with kind of a daydream about my love for the Caribbean, and there's a certain veranda that I always daydreamed about that overlooked the Caribbean Sea and maybe like part of the part Royal Harbor. And so it started there on that veranda overlooking the Moonlight Bay, and um, 
and it's from Charlotte's View, and then Sterling, handsome young buccaneer, showed up on the rooftop. <laughs> he was running from a dog, and we don't exactly know what he got himself into. <laughs> How he ended up on the rooftop. Um, but, you know, they get to know each other that night and kind of, you know, start to like each other, and the story goes from there, mm -hmm. which um, – She's, she's a noblewoman's daughter, I to mention that part, and you know, him being a buccaneer is quite a forbidden affair. So between all the dangers of that, of his, his life of piracy, and you know, her being you know, kind of a, a sheltered rich girl, so the little forbidden romance that they ensued takes us on a journey across the high seas in the 17th century Caribbean. Nice, love it. <laughs> so, how long does it take you to create a, a book, to write a book, from conception to the end? Generally, like the the novels, like the one I just told you about, the Justified Treason series with Charlotte and Sterling. Their books probably take about a no more than a year, you know, working on off on it. And I'm usually working on more than one book at once. And like I said, I've always done series. Okay. Uh, book one, an Uncharted Secret series, which goes back and tells the story about Sterling's parents. Okay. hear about them in a Justified Treason series. He never knew his mother and his father was a notorious black and air captain. Okay. And so I kind of wanted to know what, you know, who this mysterious, you know, mother of his was and went back to find out um, the first two books in that series, I think I did in like two months. They just like, oof, those they stories told <laughs> Kind of had a lot to say. <laughs> Very, very cool. So you, you are an artist as well, and yes. now a writer. Was, was that too difficult to make that, that move? Or um, do you foresee yourself having a project in the future where you're combining both? Well, I do design my cover art myself. Uh, well, my, do you? My, okay. I do. I don't want to say by myself. My friend, uh, Megan Dinsdale, Brand Creative, she, I, I basically design the idea and she finalizes it, refines it, and makes it, you know, worthwhile graphic-wise. Wow. Um, so I use my art for that. And then also being an art-minded person who sees, you know, the world in vivid colors, that helps me to bring the story to life as I'm writing it. Now I say I, I paint with words nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, but, um, the like I said, the technical part of writing it's like it's one thing to be like, oh, look at this beautiful beach, but it's another to actually put your comma periods and and, and semi colons where they belong, you know. I know. <laughs> the nuts and bolts of writing, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, um, very very cool. So, in the story, what would be one of your favorite scenes and why? In any of them, or, or you can, um, or a couple. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to say because I have so many books. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really enjoy writing the action scenes, the sea mm -hmm. battles, the fights. Those scenes in the end are always my favorite when they're complete. Mm -hmm. But they're one of the harder ones to write because there's so much going on from different angles, different perspectives. And I write from first person, so I'm like in the character's head. So it's like you need to know what they're doing, what these people are doing over here, what they, where the ship's sailing, where the great guns are shooting, but all within the tunnel vision of this person's mind. So there's, there's a lot going on, but like I said, in the end, those are like the coolest read over after. <laughs> <laughs> very, very cool. So um, who are some of the authors that have influenced you? I, we know you like pirates, and so that, that particular medium, the movies, and that has influenced you as an artist, and you brought that into your writing, but were there any other mediums that? Um, well, like I said, Treasure Island is one of my favorite yes, that was cool. books of all time. Um, you know, that's all adventure and all that, that jazz. Um, I recently found a book uh, called Flint and Silver that they prequel to Treasure Island. That's uh, by author John Drake. He's amazing. And so it's more of a, I don't know, like adult version. It's, um, <laughs> More risque, more violent, you know, cursing. There's a, like, a love story kind of intertwined into it, some saucy stuff. And so that was really fun because it was, like, all the things that I love in a pirate story, but based on my favorite, you know, uh, classic tale, Treasure Island. So anytime I read a pirate 
story, I get all inspired. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Do you think you'll ever write in any other genre? Oh, yeah, totally. I already accidentally started a <laughs> moonshine runner story. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Over the summer, we went to Las Vegas and just mm -hmm. learning about like Bonnie and Clyde. We went to see their death. How nice! That was really cool. And then, so I started thinking about their story and then the history of Vegas and the casino. The, so, um, like I said, I, I kind of started a moonshine runner story, but it's based in the Southwest, which is nice. moonshine was, you know, um, run during prohibition in the Southwest. People don't really talk about it as much though as they do in the, you know, in the South. So that's something I definitely want to do. I'm already like quite a few chapters in, so maybe it's a super rough draft, but I had to put that aside while I finished these. Um, also, I want to write Westerns one day because I love, yeah. I love pirates. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot that we can expect from you. That's awesome. How many are there in your series as of right now? And um, how many I, are you going to have? I have 11 books so far within all three series. Wow. Um, Justified Treason has four right now. There will be five. Mm -hmm. um, Uncharted Secret also four. There will be five. Um, Tales of a Navigator, my little short story, I about 40 pages each. Those are um, kind of Sterling's backstory, how he became a Buccaneer pirate and, um, you know, his first kill, the first time he kind of fell in love or whatever you want to call that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're super short and really um, neat stories. And so I want to write a bunch more of those mm -hmm. because they're short and fun and exciting. But also, um, I started writing Mason Bentley's story, it's Sterling's father. Okay. I started writing his life story. That's also going to be five five books that's a part of the same, you know, giant series. And so, yeah, I have quite a few more books. In wow. Yeah. You got a, you have so much on your plate. So what is your process? Are you up early mornings and you write for a designated time? Or are you late evenings? I mean, or just hodgepodge, however you can get it. <laughs> I definitely don't wake up early if I can help it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, my, like I said, I'm, I'm, my kids are always first. I, I get them to school. I do all their stuff. Luckily, they don't start till eight forty. That's nice. <laughs> yes. um, and I do my work at the shop. I kind of have, I have a rough schedule of what I need to be doing all week, and somehow I always finish it all. But it's like crazy because I'm a crazy artist, and I have a really hard time scheduling my thoughts. <laughs> yes, I understand. <laughs> but I write as much as I possibly can, you know, during the day when they're at school and uh, a lot at night when everybody's asleep and the house is quiet. I always stay up way too late because, you know, no one's bugging me and I finally have that time. Uh, I laugh about how <laughs> my best creative writing comes out late at night, mm -hmm. because, you know, but it's like the words, you know, grammar and the errors. And I'm like, oh, in the morning, I got to clean it all up, you know, let it flow without worrying about that stuff. <laughs> How, much, how many times do you go through it, I mean, as far as your editing process, and then off to betas and all of that? A lot. <laughs> like, I know these stories back and forth, front to back. Um, so, I don't know. I've never really thought about the number. You know, I generally, I write, um, go over each kind of chapter of time uh, of a few times. I also, um, really fun editing tool that I found is my Kindle reads to me, my Kindle oh. Fire. Yes. So I can email myself documents and I'll have it read me the chapter and I'll kind of listen to it while I'm cleaning house and whatnot. Oh and my then I hear the typos or I'll hear, oh, I said that word too many times on that page. Or, you know, the little things that your eyes skip over because you read it a hundred times and, you know, you're used right. to what you're supposed to say. So that's huge. Um, yes, that's a great idea. <laughs> remember that when you're writing. I got it. <laughs> I um, so once the chapter is, you know, fairly sound story-wise and whatnot, I send it to, um, for, for like right now, King of My Nightmare, the one I'm working on, I have my sister Tori and my friend uh, Sarah, and they beta read the chapter and then kind of give me some feedback. And then I kind of build off of their, you know, information. Mm -hmm. And then um, once I get through the whole, we'll do that chapter for chapter. Once I'm done with the whole book, I'll go back over, read it all again. And then, you know, get ready for editing, which is, as you know, there's plenty more after that. <laughs> yes, more. Oh, my goodness, I'm going to lose my hat here. Uh, very cool. Wow. I've learned something. You know, I never thought about having that read back to me. So that's really, really, really good. It's so helpful. Um, <laughs> and you learn so much. And you mentioned your covers and, um, and getting that together. What? I'm, I'm going to ask every 
author that I've, I've worked with um, this particular question. What caused you to choose the path as far as publishing that you have chosen? Meaning, um, you know, the independent publishing, you know, versus going to a larger house or, you know, hybrid. How did you get on the path that you are on? And what was one thing you've learned now that you didn't know when you started? Okay, cool. I like that question. <laughs> um, when I started, it never went crossed my mind to go traditional publishing. I just, you know, being an artist and a, and a pirate who doesn't like follow the rules, <laughs> um, I just wanted to do everything, you know, my way. I was kind of like nervous about somebody else taking control over my art. Uh, and so, you know, I went independent and I'm, you know, doing pretty well with that. I love designing my own cover. I enjoy doing the, the formatting, picking the clip art and the, the fonts and all those things. And um, I have some really good editors that I trust with my heart and soul to get the best out of my story. And um, the one thing that would be nice about a traditional publisher is you just get to write. Yeah. And, you know, you don't got to worry yeah. about all the other stuff. And all the other things. And marketing, though, I enjoy um, getting out there and, and talking to my readers. And I have a really close relationship with a lot of my readers through the stories and whatnot. Um, so I love that part of it, but it's a lot of work to yes. get out there and yes. to keep promoting, keep updating the post and all those things. Um, the constant presence that you must have, right? And, and keeping it fun. <laughs> yes. Like, you know, I'm selling you, uh, you know, because <laughs> um, <laughs> overall, I mean, that's the thought. It's like, I want to sell my stories, but, um, but yeah, yeah. You know, keeping it unique and keeping it fresh and, um, Something that the authors want to, or the readers want to engage in and be a part of, and right. tell you know my readers that without without them it would just be a dream. So yeah, um, it's really important to me to keep in touch with them throughout all of these processes and, and all the things I go through. So overall, I'm a pretty happy independent author, mm -hmm. and um, it's been a lot of work, but it's it's been worth it every step of the way. Very cool. And since seeing that this is a steampunk, it is inside steampunkery, um, I am going to, I know that you, you don't, do you, what do you categorize yourself? I mean, I've heard the term pirate punk thrown around. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, you are an artist. So do you do the cosplay? Do you go to the conventions? Um, tell us about that. You know, do you, what do you categorize yourself as? Uh, well, I do go to pirate parties. I'm actually going to one yeah. next weekend, which I'm really excited about. <laughs> it's so fun. The pirate people are so cool. I've met the neatest people. And, you know, I got my hat here that I, you know, I got. love your hat. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, you know, I got a kind of a cool, like, long and bonnie style coat. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I dress up and do the part, and I love talking with the people who also do it. And um, it's, it's, it's a fun, it's, you know, it's, Part of my job and it promote network all that stuff but it's yeah. so much fun that it, it is fun. It makes it like the coolest job in the world you know <laughs> it, is. it is you get to dress up and, and cool out business things um so what about the community i mean because i'm thinking it's such a unique community and the more that you know we, we were getting ready for this i've, I've seen other pirate loving you know mm -hmm. <laughs> folks and memes and things like that so um is there a big community where you are or not here in San Diego? There's not mm -hmm. there's a lot up in LA. So when I go to things, I just did, you know, travel up there, which is like two hours away. Um, but you know, on Facebook, there's, that's what's really cool. And, and we're lucky as independent authors these, these days that we yes. can reach out across the nation. Just and everywhere. Other countries, you yes. know, just from, you know, hiding in our little cave. At home. <laughs> <laughs> um, or scribbling in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, the people in the pirate the pirate community is much bigger than I ever imagined it would be. Yes, and um, there's like I said, I've met the coolest people, and not only um, just for like the dress up and the fun and the celebration of it, but the whole culture and the the respect for the history mm -hmm. uh, is is amazing. And I actually have learned a lot from different people in the group that know about. Um, different parts of the, the era that have helped me write my stories. Mm -hmm. and, um, a lot of them have been very willing to, you know, get interviewed and, and whatnot. Oh, cool. I know uh, um, 
a blacksmith, Will Smithy King. He uh, makes historic replicas of weapons from the Golden Age piracy and whatnot. And so I'll talk to him about what steel were they using, how do they make the weapons, um, you know, how does the metal look, like it with it, you know, shiny and dull, with a little sheen to it. Um, things that help bring the weaponry to my story to life. Also, in my story, uh, every time it rains, there's actually a, a blacksmith character. So he really helped me to bring the, the setting of the blacksmith shop to life. And uh, I know a few sailors who I talked to in interview, <laughs> which is very cool because sailing is one of the hardest things. I tell you, technology, it it's easy for me to write because okay. it's so complicated. <laughs> so my, my friend, um, Pierre Rose, he's a, he sails the Lady Washington, a call ship. And so we talk, he talks to me about the terms, the things that they would say to each other, the commands, the, the names of the sails, how, where everything goes. And so especially in my latest book, King of My Nightmare, I'm really bringing the sailing aspect into the story and all that went into getting one of those big old wooden ships to move across the sea. Um, also, my friend uh, Barnabas Thompson, who I met through Pirate Community, he is uh, also a sailor and a pirate historian. He's been studying pirate history forever. Wow. And he knows so much. And we'll just talk or Skype or whatever about uh, the different things that actually happen in history, the, the, the fight tactics, the sailing action. And uh, so within the, the pirate community, it's been not only fun, but really resourceful for me to help make my story as realistic to the, the past as possible. I just love it. I love it. I love it. I'm just having so much fun chatting with you. It's so different and fresh. I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, so what would be one of the most interesting things you've learned through your research? You know, a, a fact or a resource or a store or something. I think overall, the actual, the, the dynamic of a true pirate crew mm -hmm. surprised me. And um, through Hollywood, you get this certain image, and what really happened is quite different mm -hmm. from what the common, you know, the general public kind of knows about the life of a pirate. Um, they had, first of all, a lot of the pirate people were, you know, they were the outcasts of society. They were people who were, um, you know, that were in the Navy and then the, the war would end and the, they just kick them out by no pension, no retirement, and all they knew were their skills of sea. And so they, you know, did that. Um, also a lot of merchant sailors who were abused and mistreated by their captains and paid very poorly. Mm -hmm. When their ships were taken by pirates, they would often join the pirate crew because then they were, you know, treated better. Uh, and then, so you have this group of runaway slaves, indentured servants, and like all the outcasts that didn't fit in anywhere else, which gave you a very um, multicultural, multiracial group of people, which is a very uncommon scenario back then. Very cool. And so they all came together and worked together to, of course, you know, rob the rich, which, <laughs> <laughs> which you can glorify that because they were thieves, but... In a lot of ways, a lot of them considered it as a, as a vengeance, you know? It was like, they, they robbed from me my life. They robbed from me my freedom. They, mm -hmm. my, you know, killed my family, stole my farm, whatever um, these higher-ups did to these people. This was their way to um, take a claim on their own lives and fight back. And so then within their crew, they had a code of conduct, which is you know, the Articles of Agreement, they were called. And um, there's a few historic pirate crows that were preserved. So in my stories, I kind of pluck out the different articles that I like or I find useful for the tale. Um, <clears throat> one of the major things I think that was surprising is the captain was voted in and could be voted out. Okay, wow. So there was none of this tyrannical pirate captain who told everybody what to do and everybody jumped. If he was jerk and he didn't treat his men fair, I think I'm Boat him out and put a new one in. So he had to, you know, do a solid job and treat his men right. And then um, the captain and the quartermaster and the higher ups, they ha they didn't get paid that much more than everybody else. It was very um, fair shares all around. And the only time the captain has all time reign over the group and decisions made 
it's during times of engagement. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you know, they're fighting and stuff. Other than that, it was a vote. Every heading, every prize they chased, everything, everywhere they went, everything they did was all based on a show of hands. Wow. So, here you have this, like I said, this group of ragtag dudes who are used to, you know, being sh shunned aside, who all of a sudden they have a vote. They're getting paid well, they're getting paid fair, and they're like, they matter now. Mm. And, um, things like that. Uh, there's a lot of other articles that go along with it. I could go on forever about this. But um, so knowing these certain elements that went into the true dynamics of the crew mm -hmm. helped me to create my stories. I have, I have guidelines I have to follow, you know, that, okay, so my, you know, if I'm following the captain of the story and he wants to do this, you can't just say, hey, guys, we're going to go over here. I got to, right. how is he going to get his men to believe that this is the right course? Very of course, cool. there's always dissension. There's always dissension. <laughs> <laughs> Mutiny of room. The turmoil there. <laughs> hey, that is really cool because I've learned something because you're right. You know, what you've said is so different than what you see on in the movies. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very, very cool. Were there many, I'm seeing Many, I see a lot of uh, the female pirates now, but were there many back then? There were very, very few that are known in history, and the oh. ones that are known have amazing stories. Really? Very cool. Very cool. Because women back then had no rights. Yes. Or property. You know, you were your father's daughter and your husband's wife, and that was it. You couldn't buy property, you couldn't own anything, you couldn't vote, you couldn't, you had no say. So oh. um, in order to make a stand in a world where you had no rights and no respect, mm -hmm. women had to do some interesting things. Um, <laughs> Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed are two of my favorites. They actually were female parents who disguised themselves as men. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of blended in with the crew, but overall, um, once again, that's something I could talk about forever because I love this story. But overall, in the end, they proved themselves to be um, of the toughest on their crew and fought just as hard, if not harder, than the men and just proved themselves absolutely worthy. Um, and then uh, you have Chin Shi and uh, Grace O'Malley, who both were not disguised as men, they were women who not only participated in pirate crews, but they were each captains. Wow. Wow. Grace That's O'Malley really cool. was Irish, and so she was born into a family of warriors and earned her respect throughout her life and became a captain. And then um, <coughs> Chin Shi was a prostitute who was kidnapped by a pirate, mm -hmm. and the captain and her got married, and she actively engaged in his life of piracy, as they say. And throughout their relationship, she built relationships with his business partners and earned her respect. And so once he died, these um, people still knew her and respected her and, and would rather talk to her, you know, than the rest of the crew. So she earned her name. And she actually was one of the most successful, not only female pirates, but pirates of all time. That is incredible. That is, that is very cool. Ne I, had, I never heard of her, but I love that. I love that a lot. Um, are you going to ever do <clears throat> books based on these people? You know, I don't know, bio, you know. I'm not brave enough to take on a true historical. <laughs> I feel like there's so much in someone's life, and right. I don't know are responsible for, you know, marring that. Right. Um, but all of my female parents and my stories are very much based on Obviously. these four women and different aspects of their lives. Because taking a female lead in, in my fictional stories in a time where women had no rights to, to make a powerful character takes a lot of finesse mm -hmm. and to make it realistic you know she can't just jump on the ship and say hey guys listen to me you know right um so each of the let's see i have charlotte hannah and uh, remington in between the three of them each of them have very different stories as to how they became you know female pirate and um like I said, are based off of those historic female characters. So I want it to be real and to make sense and for you to understand why this is, you know, happening and how as their stories come along. Very, very cool. Well, um, before we, you know, get down to the end of time, I do want to chat a little bit, a bit more about your art as well. And um, what do you think about the steampunk phenomenon and how 
um, they are pulling in the power punk. I, you know, I've met cosplay players who dress up and they, they call, they say it's power punk. So that's beginning to really be strong in the steampunk world. How do you feel about that? Well, it's, I never had heard of steampunk before joining the hair community. <laughs> and then I see this, I'm like, what is this? You know, they yeah. look kind of cool. What are their outfits all about, you know? And, um, and, you know, I'll see them at pirate parties and stuff, and it's a cool blend. Um, the, the, cost, the, the outfits, the different hats and stuff kind of can work together. And I really think the, the steampunk thing is neat. I love <laughs> the style. And, the brass and the gold and I the love leather. It. And yes. I really love the look of it. I haven't learned too much yet about what goes on in the, the culture besides what I've seen at the fire community, but um, but it's definitely catching to the eye. It is. It is. <laughs> I'm get you there. Very, very cool. In your art, what are some of your creations? I know you do your covers, but what are other things that do you sell and where can people find you locally or what do they what you know how do you get it out there i have um an etsy store for now eventually i'm gonna oh. my website. so i sell my art online um i also have stuff at the, at the auto shop i commandeered a little area that's my you know art to death fair where um, my husband's customers and whatnot get my stuff too um and lately also my art has become very you know pirate and I do a lot of things that go along with my stories. I make bookmarks, I make um, jewelry, and um, different, like, I like to get the parchment-y looking paper and put verses from my stories on it, or like my character's emblems, and then like crinkle them up and burn the edges to make <laughs> it cool. Um, so cool. So, yeah, whatever I can do to bring, um, deepen the dimension, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. or immerse you in this you know, fantasy that I'm living in myself. <laughs> <laughs> Just come into my world. Come into my world. Welcome. <laughs> um, you have a, a newer release, a new release coming. Um, so tell about that and the events and the candles. And, I mean, just whatever you can, no spoilers. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, like I said, it's about Nathan Bentley, Sterling, father. And um, as of yet, he's a supporting character in all three of my existing stories. And not only me falling for him myself as I learned about him, but the reaction that I've got from my readers, the, the men just respect him, they admire him, they want to know more about him. The women, of course, you know, swoon for him. And <laughs> so he's got a good, you know, male and female interest going there. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to write this guy's story. And um, some of it I already kind of knew from what he tells Hannah in Uncharted Secrets, kind of the beginning. And so, um, but other than that, the rest is like very a blank canvas. So I, I know that there's one certain point where I need to get into Hannah. But otherwise, um, whereas writing Uncharted Secrets, I had a lot of little things to lay thin and consider for my other story. So with this one, it's very open, and I have had so much fun learning <laughs> about this guy and his. It brought me to a different time in history because we're going way back to 16, the 1640s. Oh, it starts wow. in the English countryside. So I had to learn about that whole lifestyle and what the peasants lived like then. And then um, getting him out to sea and the different adventures that he experiences. The thing that is the most unique about this story compared to my others is there's no love story. <laughs> it is, He's got women <laughs> too, on and off, but that's not the driving force of this tale. Okay. It's action and adventure and fighting and sailing. And, um, so it's more of like a, a man's tale or whatever you want to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, is, it has been a blast to write. And, Very cool. And like, it's totally different. It's something fresh. And... I'm finding myself leaning more and more towards the action and adventure of these stories. When, when does it release? Or has it? Um, I'm nearing the end of my first draft. Oh, okay. So it's, it's soon to come. Okay. Yeah, it's soon to come. I would like to get it out sometime in the spring if possible, but I'm not throwing any dates out yet. Right. Um, but I did like the candle you mentioned. I had a candle made by Book Fence. She's awesome. She will, any of you authors out there, 
She will take your read your story, learn all about your characters, and help you create a candle that smells like either one of your characters or the setting. And so when you're reading, you can just be all immersed in the tale. That is so awesome. I think that is so cool. Very, very cool. All right. Well, as we get down to the last few minutes, let's do some just for funs. What do you do to just relax? When you do have a little bit of time on your hands, what do you like to do? Honestly, because I'm like super like hyperactive and like, <laughs> stuff, um, the best way for me to relax is to read. Yeah. And the one thing I can do where I'm just like sitting there and my mind isn't, you know, cranking, my gears aren't turning, I'm just following the river of someone else's imagination. Very, and very cool. You know, relaxing things I need to do. And what would be something that you're about you, that your readers would be surprised to learn? <laughs> I'm very, um, like, I don't want to say anti-social, but like <laughs> collectively social. <laughs> yes. You know? And like, and I love talking to my readers and stuff and, and whatever, but I'm not like, I don't like going out of my cove very often. <laughs> I love, I love uh, you know, social media so that I can be in touch with them. Without actually having to. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of bad. I keep wondering if I should get over it, but I just, I love being home. I love my little house and I love my, you know, environment here and it's an inspiring place. And so oh, I just very really love being home. And I see your little nook and I love your skull there. I think that is so <laughs> awesome. How you, so how does your family um, feel, you know, about your, your art, your writing, your pirate world? <laughs> My husband is super supportive. He is my my, my sponsor. (laughs) He's just like, you know what? If you you love it and um, he's got, you know, if I do my jobs, if I do my stuff at the shop, I keep saying the kids are well behaved. He's he's totally supportive of me doing what I love as well. He's, um, you know, fortunate enough to do what he loves with his auto shop. He loves cars. He loves, you know, building things. So he gets to do what he loves for a living. So he's more than supportive of me also doing what I love. You know, and so he's great with that. And he actually took me to a pirate party last summer oh. and he liked it. You know, <laughs> he liked all the outfits and, you know, the belly dancers and yes. all, <laughs> all that fun stuff. So he's, he's great about that. And actually this summer he's um, encouraging me to try to get a vendor booth at the, the big event. So oh. doing that. Um, Is this your first event or no? That's, I've never had a vendor booth at an event like that. It's something I've always wanted to do. Very and cool. The candles and the books and, you know, all those things. So I'm yes. Really that works out. Um, so, yeah, he's great. And then my kids, you know, they're fine. They, they, my daughter, she's an artist like me, so she's all about all this stuff. And they both, my son wanted, um, his, we just redecorated his room, and he wanted a captain's cabin theme in there. So I was all about that, you know. Uh. So. They play along with me. And, uh, <laughs> my son won't dress up at the events. He's 11, you know, and he's kind yes. of like cool for all that. But um, my daughter, she's six, and she dresses up. She'll wear her pirate hat, and she Aww. wears her mermaid, her aerial dress, so she's a pirate mermaid. And <laughs> She's like, yeah. <laughs> very, very cool. All right, well, we are um, getting down to time here. And what would you, what would be one piece of advice? Well, first, I'm going to ask you two questions. First one. <laughs> What has been the most rewarding experience for you since being published? Is hearing back from the readers, um, just knowing that, you know, I have this daydream and it's something that's, you know, consumed my mind and, and, <laughs> and to not only have it be really fun for me to do, but to know that people are reading it and enjoying it and, you know, going on an adventure because of, you know, my imagination and then hearing back from them when they email me or call, some of them, you know, call me, I see some at the shop and knowing, you know, how they react to my character and how it's, you know, twist and turn, surprise them. And then um, one of the really cool things is uh, one of my, my favorite uh, fans, uh, Pirate Peggy, she got... Sterling Compass Rose tattoo tattooed on her arm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I have like a lot of fun designing the characters' tattoos when I'm writing about them. I don't have any myself, but so I, I love like talking about what they have. And Sterling has a compass rose over his heart because he's a navigator and that's what he loves to do. 
And so um, knowing that, you know, I really enjoyed making the design and, you know, she liked it enough to actually use my art from my story. And that get is it so cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I actually, I do have one other question. Do you think you'll have one of the alternate personas, you know, will you be captain, you know, someone or that's down the road or maybe never? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked. That's really fun. I have um, Ivy is my pirate character, and that's my oh, name. So Ivy is your pirate character. No. And so one day, and so when I go to events, I'm, I'm Ivy, and I want to write her story one day, and um, it would be called Feather in the Wind. <laughs> she's going to be like I'm gonna be like 17, 15 Nassau, like the golden age of piracy, when all my kind of favorite historic pirates live. And um, she's gonna live in a little in an inn there where her parents own an inn, so it's kind of like talk to everybody that goes in and out. And basically, she's gonna be like a 17th or an 18th century journalist who, because oh. not everybody could write back then and, and read, so she'll write people stories for them or deliver letters for people, um, anything that's to do with the written word, like me, you know, in my real life as a writer. And so, in a lot of ways, I'll take my personal story and characters from my life and put them in the, in the tale. Um, and it'll, you know, be all about the, the adventures of delivering these letters and the different people. I mean, you know, some people don't want their stories told, so the troubles that will come of that. And so, yeah, that basically, you know, in, in the pirate world, Ivy is the author of all these pirate tales. Oh, uh, so endless. Oh, so endless horizon. That's that's Ivy. How <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love that. It's fun, you know. <laughs> oh, it is fun. It is very cool. So very, very nice. Well, nice meeting you, Chrissy and Ivy. <laughs> um, now I will ask, uh, what would be one piece of advice that you would give someone brand new to writing or to this world, and they're just starting out? What would you say to them? That's hard. I'm actually writing a column for a home study magazine, giving advice to aspiring young authors. So Very I'm cool. into all these thoughts. It's a multi-part article because there's so much to learn. Um, I know, and it's kind of cliche because everybody says that, like, just write. Right. Just write. Just yeah. sit down and let those feelings flow. But um, also, I guess, a little more maybe unique piece of advice is immerse yourself in your setting. Whatever yes. genre you chose, choose to write yes. in, find pe other people that love it, that want to talk about it. Yes. You know, paint your room a new color if you can. Yes. Uh, get the wall art, you know, get the candles, get the incense, the perfume, whatever it is that you're doing, just live it. Because the, real, the more real it is to you as the author, the more real it will be to your readers when they join you for your adventure. I completely agree with that. I'm going to lose my hat on top of it. But I love it. That is so true. I agree with becoming, just getting immersed in that world. And it, and, and with, through that love and passion, it'll come out in your work. So very cool. I love it. All right. Well, we are out of time. Um, Chrissy, where can everyone touch base with you, grab copies of your books, your art, connect with you? Um, on Facebook. It, on um, Endless Horizon Pirate Stories on Facebook is my author page. Mm -hmm. When you're on there, you'll see, you know, Ivy on there too. So you can always find my, my personal page on there too. Cause I, I made that for, you know, my book life and um, Facebook's the best place and you can find everything else from there. I also have a website, EndlessHorizonDesigns.com and um, yeah, you can get all my contact stuff there and message me. I love talking to my readers and you know, sharing this experience with anyone who's willing to come along. <laughs> well, I have had so much fun chatting with you and just seeing you, just your whole persona. That it, it really is. It's, it's been awesome. Thank you so much for participating. Um, I wish you well with all your future endeavors. And you are welcome to come back anytime. Now, all the viewers, um, Miss Avi, Miss Christy Tarrant will be on the interview behind the scenes as well in March. So make sure that you check that out as well. So come on to chat with myself and my co-host Jamie White. So we're looking forward to that as well. Thanks so. for having me. It was so much fun. You were great to talk with. <laughs> Thank you. I've had, I've had so much fun with you as well. Come back anytime. And everyone that is listening out there um, or viewing, <laughs> I've got to get used to it. 
interviewing. Thank you so much for joining us and just hope that you will come back next month to see who my next guest will be in this world of punk. I'm having such a good time, guys, and we want you to come in and meet all these great, talented, unique people. And, and you, I'm sure you'll find uh, reads that you will love. So make sure that you come back, join us, and that you, um, until then, happy reading. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.